بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله may Allah سبحانه وتعالى have mercy upon us and mercy upon you and may Allah forgive us and forgive you and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى guide us and guide you to that which is right and straight and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless us with إخلاص لله والثبات على سنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم آمين يا رب العالمين. Imam Bahari رحمه الله تعالى said with regard to the thirteenth point. قال رحمه الله تعالى وعلم رحمك الله أن الكلام في رب تعالى محدث وبدعة وضلالة ولا يتكلم في رب إلا بما وصف به نفسه عز وجل في القرآن وما بين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأصحابه وهو جل ثناؤه واحد ليس مثله شيء وهو السميع البصير ربنا أول بلا منتهى وآخر بلا منتهى ربنا أول بلا متى وآخر بلا منتهى قال إمام بابهاري رحمه الله تعالى He said may Allah have mercy upon you Know that speculative speech about the Lord the Most High is a newly invented matter and is an innovation and misguidance Nothing is to be said about the Lord except what He, the Mighty and Majestic, described Himself with in the Qur'an, and what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, explained to His companions. So He, the Mighty, is one. There is nothing like Him, and He is the All-Hearing, the All-Seeing, Al-Ayat. Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala here, laid it out very simple and clear. So this will be very brief. It doesn't require much explanation. It doesn't re require uh, commentary because it's very clear that Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala is giving you another qaida of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is that they do not speculate about Allah Azza wa Jal. And that speculation about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a heretical innovation in the religion of Islam. And this is what those groups like all the way back from the Ma'tazila, Ma'tazila, the Jahamiyyah, the later came the Asha'ira, and all these other groups from Ahl Kalam, and they actually some of them take that as a praiseworthy trait of being Ahl Kalam, the people of, of, of speech or uh, philosophy or what have you, that they actually take pride in that title. But being from Ahl Kalam is madhmoom and the Salafa hadhi ummah, from the Sahaba to the Tabi'een, with Itba'a Tabi'een, and those who follow them. Bi ihsan al yawmuddin consider that trait to be a negative trait and negative characteristic that you were to speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to debate about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his divine names and attributes instead of accepting them as they came in the Quran as they was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself from his divine speech in the Quran and as he subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed on the tongue of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he articulated to his sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een and they didn't ask how they didn't say uh, Ya Rasulullah how does Allah uh, rise above his throne? How does Allah raise above his throne? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laugh? How does... No! They didn't ask these questions they accepted they accepted Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they believed in it. And this is how we believe. 
This is our creed. This is the creed of Ahlul Sunnah. They don't debate those things. They don't negate those things. They don't change the meaning of those things. They do not uh, distort the meanings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly articulated fi kitabihi al-kareem. So getting involved instead of accepting getting involved in in things which we have no authority to involve ourselves with meaning we it, you know our intellect may drive us to think well how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yanzuru rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kullu thuluth al-layl al-akhir fi yaqul so ahla bid'a wa ahla ahwa they ask how how could that be Right now in, in Saudi Arabia, it's night, it's Maghrib. And in China, it is such and such time. In Seattle, Washington, or Alaska, it is such and such time. Ahl Sunnah don't do that. They don't debate those. Instead, the Qaeda, as Imam Babahari laid, laid out, is that Ahl Sunnah, we believe. We affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed about Himself. And we negate what Allah tabarak wa ta'ala negated about Himself in the Qur'an. And we affirm what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam affirmed about Allah azza wa jal in the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we negate what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam negated in the authentic sunnah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We negate what he negated Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. And this is the aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah. This is the minhaj and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah in dealing with those al asmai wa sifat. And that is the most simplistic uh, way of articulating that. We affirm what Allah affirms, we negate what Allah negates. We affirm what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam affirmed, we negate what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam negated. Best. And we don't have to make research other than that. We don't have to go into deep and say, well, my intellect inclines me towards this. Sheikh so-and-so's intellect inclines him towards this and, and such and such. But rather, Ahlul Sunnah, they accept and they affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms about himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, basir, that there is nothing like him. And then he affirms that he has those attributes of hearing and sight. But our hearing and sight is not like his, and his hearing and sight is not like ours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in his hearing and perfect in his seeing. He's the all hearing, all seeing, and your seeing, your sight, and your hearing is limited and flawed. And your hearing and sight is not like the elephant's hearing and sight. And your hearing and sight is not the, like the ant's hearing and sight. So we don't make any mithal, no, nor uh, we don't make an example, we don't make any resemblance between Allah Azza wa Jal and His creation, or any comparison, or any likeness. Ahl Sunnah refrains from that. But rather we accept those texts, those nasus, as they came. However, there are those individuals who say, that in this time and age, and they, they, they call to, a, to, they make dawah, they propagate Islam. But then they say these are theological debates. And they're distractions. Or that they're irrelevant. A statement like this is a statement of ignorance. Or it's a statement of deviance. It's one of the two. That a person is either ignorant, not well grounded in ilm, because how can you dispute what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, 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 very clear and made subhanahu wa ta'ala very well known that tawheed is first. The call is to aqidah and tawheed. So yes, tawheed and aqidah distinguishes us between disbelievers, those people who don't believe in Islam. And Aqidah and Tawheed distinguishes Ahl Sunnah from Ahl Bid'ah. That's just the way it is. We can't, we can't uh, accept it any other way. It is what it is. 
if you believe what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to believe, as He subhanahu wa ta'ala articulated it in the Quran about Himself that He rose above His throne, or you believe that, of course you're going to be in disagreement with those people who say, well, that's not that important. If you say Allah is above His throne, or you say Allah is everywhere, or you say Allah is in the bathroom, or you say, وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Listen to the, the batil that is being propagated. أَيُّ اللَّهِ حَبَّتِ فِي اللَّهِ Wallahi, I say this out of nasiha. It's not out of uh, a desire to be anything. But this is just out of advice. This is what we learn from the mashayikh. And aside from that, this is what is the evidence shows us. From Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How can you ever? Islam is all about Tawheed. It's all about who Allah is and how to worship Him properly. Everything in Islam leads back to Tawheed. Even the Hadood, even your Zakat, even your Hajj, all of your Ibadah. All of it has to be mabniyah to Allah kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of it has to be done with sincere, sincerity, ikhlas lillah. Wa in conformity, mutabah. Conformity to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he did it. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. That's what it is. That's what Islam is. Islam is not our desires that now we want to say it's okay to protest. Now we want to say it's okay to believe Allah is everywhere. Now we want to say it's okay to go around the grave 12 times and say Abdul Qadir Jilani's name. Now we want to say Abdullah Herdi is the sheikh and we want to follow him in battle and falsehood and zambaka wa heresy. Wa'iyadun billah min dhalika. And to see what they're doing to Ahlul Sunnah around the world, the Jamaat al Ahbash, especially in Ethiopia, Wa'iyadim Billah. May Allah remove them as an obstacle in front of Ahlul Sunnah, the Dawah to Ahlul Sunnah, the Dawah ila Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. That's what Islam is. It's Mabniyatun ala Tawheed. Well, it's Mabniyatun ala Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah. That's what Islam is. Islam is not Khomeini. Islam is not the Shia's Tariqa. Islam is not the Sufi's Tariqa, Naqshbandi, this and that. No. Islam is pure. Islam is coming from Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa fahama salafa hadhi ummah. That's what Islam is. That's the purity of Islam. That's where our creed comes from. That's where our deen comes from. So we don't have to debate and dispute and argue and think and reflect and come up with something new with about who Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yubayin hadha lana fi kitab al kareem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear for us. He made it clear. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam made it clear. We don't want to follow the sunnah of Ahl kitab لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب ومشركين في النار منفكين حتى حتى تأتيهم حتى تأتيهم البينة أهل الكتاب and the people the people of the book and the مشركين they began to dispute When Allah made it clear for them, when the truth came, the truth is here. Ayyul Habitatillah. It's in Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about what to believe about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But then when that truth comes, that's when the people begin to split. No, 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 no. I don't want to believe that Allah rose above His throne. No, if you say Allah rose above His throne, it's like this and it's like this. My intellect inclines me towards this. It makes me think you're you're making tishbi. You're making a resemblance between Allah and His creation because His creation rises. How can Allah rise? How can Allah descend when His creation descends? Wa'iyadim billah. These are disputes and argumentation that didn't come to the people before. This didn't come uh, with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum They didn't have problems with these issues and accepted these issues. They understood and believed in the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So ayyul habiti billah. In ending this lesson, 
it should be very clear to us the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he narrated a statement or he had it uh, in Majmu'a Fatawa on Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, rahimahullah jami'an, where he said, Amantu bima ja'a an Allahi wa bima ja'a an Rasuli an Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an maradi Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi Wasallam. So he he narrated a statement where Imam Shafi'i said, I believe in what came from Allah and what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with with the in accordance with what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam intended. Meaning that he believes what the Quran says, he believes what the authentic Sunnah says in accordance with how the Messenger وسلم, intended it and intended to articulate it. Because this is how we take our creed. The Prophet وسلم, is the leader of Ahl Sunnah Tibu Jama'ah. He's the Messenger of Allah. He is the one who is ma'soon that we follow in totality alayhi salatu wa salam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him as a messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also in another statement collected on Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala qal لِلَّهِ أَسْمَاءِ وَصِفَاتِ جَاءَ بِهَا كِتَابِهِ وَأَخْبَرَ بِهَا نَبِيهِ أُمَّتُهُ لَا يَسْعَى أَحَدٌ مِنْ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ قَامَتْ عَلَيَّ الْحُجَّةُ رَدَّهَا Imam Shafi also said that for Allah is divine names and attributes that came in his book and that his messenger told us about, told his ummah about. And it is not permissible for anyone from amongst Allah's creation who the hujjah, who the, the proof has been presented to and established upon to refute that. So accept Kitabi Law Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as it came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as he articulated Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Imam Muwafiq al Din Ibn Qudama al Maqtasi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, one of the great Imams uh, of the Hanabila school of fiqh, Sahib al Mughni, he wrote an, uh, a magnificent book entitled Al Mughni which is a book in uh, where he made a uh, debate or, or uh, comparative fiqh, a fantastic book, especially amongst the Hanabila books. It's the most important, the, the book uh, of the Hanabila fiqh, a very large book, a very fantastic book, which he goes through the different medhebs and debates you know, has uh, knowledge-based discussions with regards to the various evidences. So Imam Maqdisi, rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam uh, Ibn Qudama, he said in his book, Dhimma Ta'wil, with regards to the madhab of the salaf of this ummah, rahmatullah alayhi, he said, Imam bi sifati la ta'ala wa asma'ihi allati وَصَفَ بِهَا نَفْسُهُ فِي آيَاتِهِ وَتَنْزِيلِهِ أو عَلَى لِسَانِ رُسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم من غير زيادة عليها ولا نقص ولا نقص منها ولا تجاوزها ولا تفسير لها ولا تأويل لها بما يخالف ظاهرها ولا تشبيه بصفات مخلوقين إمام 
Maqdisi, Imam uh, Ibn Qudama, he said in the Madhab of the Salaf, Rahimahullah, is that they believe in the divine uh, attributes of Allah the Almighty and His names as He described them Himself in His verses and in His revelation or upon the tongue of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without increasing anything from, uh, with regards to them nor decreasing anything from them and not going beyond them and not explaining them or distorting their meaning in a way which goes against the apparent meaning of those texts and without making resemblance between the characteristics of the creation and that is only some of what Imam Ibn Qudama said with regards to the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah on how to understand the divine names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we'll end with the last statement by Imam Al Hafiz ibn Rajib Al Hanbali, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Imam uh, ibn Rajib, who has one of the most famous explanations of uh, Arba'ina Nawawi amongst the many other fantastic or magnificent works that that great Imam uh, left behind he said in a very famous book which is incredibly important and hopefully maybe one day we'll get a chance to go through it it's entitled Fadl al-Ilm al-Salaf ala khalaf and this is incredibly important. Just that title showing us the importance of the knowledge of the Salaf over those who came after them. Showing that the Salaf had more fiqh. The Salaf had more uh, understanding of the religion. The Salaf is inclusive of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and the tabi'een with ba'a tabi'een that they were the best of this ummah as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said and that their understanding in creed is the correct understanding of what Islam is Imam ibn Rajib said وَالسَّوَاب مَا عَلَيْهِ سَلَفَ الصَّالِحِ مِنْ إِمْرَارِ آيَاتِ سِفَاتِ وَأَحَدِيثِهَا كَمَا جَاءَتْ مِنْ غَيْرِ تَفْسِيرِ لَهَا وَلَا تَكَيِّفْ وَلَا تَمْثِيلْ وَلَا يُسِحْ عَنْ أَحَدٍ مِنْهُمْ خِلَافْ ذَلَكْ So Imam Ibn Rajab said, and the correct, and that which is correct, is what the Salaf, Salaf al-Salih were upon. From the uh, going through the ayat, the, the ayat of uh, the sifat, the divine attributes, and the ahadith that mention the sifat as they came with regards, uh, w without making any uh, tafsir, you know, to go into explanations that go against the, the apparent meaning of those texts, and what, without asking how and without making analogies or similitudes and it's not permissible for anyone to go against this so these are what the great imams of this religion said with, with regards to the divine names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal and with regards to avoiding debate and distorting the meaning of the ayat of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to his divine names and attributes and also without negating and asking how and making analogies 
to the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to these divine names and attributes of Allah azza wa jal. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.